Here we have another example with a third order transfer function. We want to determine the settling time and the percent overshoot considering that the complex pole dominate the response. We also want to determine the steady state error for a unit step input. Let's start with the second. If t of s is a transfer function, let's call y of s the output and r of s the input. We can now define the error as the input r of s, which is a step input, so that is 1 over s, minus the actual output, that is t times r, which is 1 over s times t of s. We can now factor 1 over s, and you're left with 1 minus that function. The steady state error is now the limit when s tends to 0 of e of s times s, which gives the limit when s tends to 0, this s cancels that s, of 1 minus the transfer function again. Now when s tends to 0, we have 108 times 3 divided by 9 th times 36, the result here is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. In the second part of this exercise, the objective is to find the percent overshoot the settling time considering only the complex dominant poles. The poles of this transfer function are negative 9 and minus 4 plus minus square root of 5j. Now notice that uh, here we have a factor of only two between the real parts of this pole. The approximation of only using the complex poles is not a very fair approximation in this case, but let's do that anyways. To use now only the complex poles, we have to neglect the pole at negative 9. We can now rewrite this expression as 108 times s plus 3. Now neglecting this pole at negative 9, we set this s to 0. We have 9 times s squared plus 8s plus 36. And here I can simplify 108 divided by 9, that is 12 times s plus 3 over s squared plus 8s plus 36. From the standard form here, we know that omega n squared is 36. So omega n is 6 radians per second. And you know that a 2 zeta omega n is 8. That gives zeta s 0 0.67. From zeta, we can calculate the percent overshoot as 100 exponential of minus pi times zeta divided by square root of 1 minus zeta squared, and this is 6%. The settling time is simply 4 over zeta times omega n. We have zeta here, we have omega n there, and this gives approximately 1 second. How close are these values to the actual response of the third order system? Well, to that we can use MATLAB and compare the results. To plot the time response using MATLAB, we first need to define the transfer function. Let's define s as our transfer function and then create polynomials as functions of s. If you want s to be our transfer function, we have to give the coefficients of the numerator as 1 and 0, so we have s plus 0, and in the denominator we have simply 1, so we have s plus 0 divided by 1. We can now define our transfer function t as a function of s. So t is also a transfer function, and when you run this code, we see the transfer function showing here. The step response can be simply obtained by typing step t, and you see the step response of t here. If you type step info of t, we can also get in the command line here all the properties of the step response of the system, such as the rise time, settling time, and overshoot. Now let's define as well the simplified transfer function. We can write here hold on so we can overlay more plots into the same graph. Here is our simplified transfer function 
and we can now do step G, hold on, and plot the time response of G. And you see here that there is a significant discrepancy between them. We can also look at this step info for G and confirm the results that we obtained in the exercise.